Hi, I'm Nick and welcome to the Riggin' Farm YouTube channel. In this video, we're going to show you how we transform this IBC tote into this aquaponics system. Aquaponics is an aquaculture system that turns fish waste into nutrients for plants grown hydroponically, which in turn purify the water. We bought 10 used 275 gallon IBC totes from a local winery knowing that they would be an affordable way to get started with aquaponics. Our Kubota MX5400 made it super easy to move one of the totes behind our home. The first thing we need to do is get the cage and the bladder of the IBC totes separated. I'm going to use my Ryobi drill with a star tip to get this done. We built a chop and flip system, so the next step is chopping the tote into two parts. A cutting wheel on our angle grinder did a pretty good job of cutting the vertical bars between the second and third horizontal bars from the top. Ashley assisted. After we separated the two pieces, I ground down the jagged edges with a grinding wheel. The cage has now been chopped and flipped. There was a lot of rust on the bottom, so I used a wire brush to clean off as much as possible, then wiped it off with an old cotton rag. We decided to put on a few coats of Rust-Oleum latex paint. All of the metal got painted. Next, I marked where to cut the plastic part of the IBC at the 175 gallon line. We didn't have blades for our jigsaw, so rather than going to the store and buying one, I used the cutting wheel on the angle grinder instead. Don't do that. It melted the plastic and didn't make very precise cuts. A circular saw would have been another good option. Well, lesson learned. As annoying as it was, it did get the job done. I used a razor blade to clean up the edges. I didn't film it, but I also cut off about 10 inches from the smaller top piece of the plastic part of the IBC. I used a hose to clean out the tote inside and out. Next I had to drill a hole into the top grow bed section that would allow me to install this bulkhead fitting for the bell siphon. This was the biggest drill bit we had, and it's an eighth of an inch too small. We used it anyway. And a hole saw would have been much better. Luckily, I still had my trusty razor blade. We put the cage on cinder blocks to keep it off the ground to help with further rust prevention and then got the pieces put together so we could assemble the bell siphon. I'll show you what a bell siphon is and how it works after we get the pieces together. These bars will be supporting a lot of the grow bed's weight, so it's important that they are installed and secured with the screws and washers we removed earlier. Might as well give them a dab of the Rust-Oleum. That hole should work for the bulkhead fitting. It's imperative that the rubber washer is on the top side of the grow bed to prevent leaks. The nut that goes on the bottom is reverse threaded, so lefty tidy. At this point, I realized that I forgot to add our 3.5 millimeter black plastic lining to the outside of the system. When the nutrient rich water gets sunlight, it's prone to algae blooms, so the white plastic would get covered with unwanted nastiness. The black plastic will block sunlight from getting to the water and allowing algae to grow. Some people paint their IBC totes, but the chemicals in the paint can leach into the plastic and contaminate the water. We want our fish and produce to be as healthy and natural as possible. The plastic sheet is 10 feet wide and 25 feet long, so I cut off 7 feet of length and began wrapping the bottom piece of the tote. I used duct tape to hold it in place. Later I went back and covered the silver tape with black tape to make it look a little bit nicer. I cut off the excess on the back side and taped it just like the front. These black corner pieces came with the tote, and I decided to put them back in the cage for a little extra support. They may or may not be completely pointless. The grow bed only needs to be covered on the sides, so I used the scrap from the bottom part of the IBC to wrap around half of it. I taped it to temporarily hold it in place while I cut the other piece of the black liner. The cage did a pretty good job of holding it in place, so I guess the tape wasn't completely necessary. Those holes in the cage are an invitation for rain and moisture to rust it from the inside out, so I capped each one with duct tape. I painted them to match, and then realized I should have taped around the pole as well. It's all good. 
that just meant it got an extra layer of paint afterwards. Before putting the grow bed on top, we used aquarium grade silicone on the lid of the IBC to prevent leaks. I definitely made a bigger mess than I should have with this. Oh well, it's non-toxic, once it cures for 24 hours. The grow bed went back on top and was secured with zip ties in the event someone or something decided to give it a nudge. Now to work on the bell siphon. I screwed in this threaded pipe adapter to the bottom of the bulkhead fitting and added 3 quarter inch pipe with a couple of elbows to allow water to drain close to the center of the aquarium. Another adapter went on top. This sticks up about an inch and a half from the bottom of the grow bed, so we need to cut a length of pipe that'll measure six and a half inches with another adapter and a one inch to three quarter inch reducer attached. This stand pipe will prevent the water level from ever exceeding eight inches in depth. Now to cut a 10 inch long piece of two inch PVC pipe. This piece here is going to make the science happen. Can't forget to clean up those edges. Now to cut feet into the bottom with the cutting wheel. It slides over the standpipe and has a cap on top. It's just shy of 11 inches from the bottom of the grow bed. Now to make the gravel guard out of 3 inch PVC pipe to keep the clay growing media from getting sucked up into the siphon. It doesn't need a cap, but some people like to add one to keep out debris. Now let me show you this little animation I made to explain exactly what a bell siphon does. Water is pumped from the aquarium into the grow bed. When the water reaches the opening of the standpipe, it creates a siphon that sucks up all the water from the grow bed and drains it back into the aquarium. Physics! We're using a 1600 gallon per hour water pump with 3 quarter inch tubing that has a few valves to help regulate the amount of water going through the system. Sometimes the tubing can be stubborn, so dipping it in near boiling water for a few seconds can soften it to make it go over the barbs more easily. Hose clamps will keep it in place. The aquarium water is going to be filtered through this filter floss stuffed into a piece of 3 inch PVC pipe almost exactly like the gravel guard. The end of the tube sits in there without any kind of help. Here it is, ready to go. Time to finally add water. It only took 40 minutes to fill. The pump was plugged in and running at this point. We put in a T fitting with a separate valve to shoot a jet of water into the aquarium at all times. This will help oxygenate the aquarium. This end gets placed into the filter floss filled pipe. The gravel guard wasn't installed at this time during the test. Well, the bell siphon works! The water level in the grow bed is going down now as it drains into the aquarium below. That gurgle means that the siphon broke and the bed will begin to fill again. Now it's time to add the clay media but first, it needs a bath. You see all that dust coming out into the air? We want to avoid putting that into our water, so we dumped three 25 liter bags at a time into our gorilla cart to get rinsed before going into the grow bed. Look at all of that. We definitely need to wash these balls. We filled the cart with water, and look how brown it is. Now to scoop the balls out with a colander. It started to warm up outside, so I ditched my jacket. I did this about, oh, a hundred times or so. The clay balls float at first, but begin to sink as they suck up water. Dragging the colander along the bottom collected way more balls than I expected. Once I couldn't scoop anymore, I tipped the cart and strained out the dregs. There was a lot of sludge at the bottom. I decided to dump that last colander full of clay balls back in and give them another good rinse before going into the bed. There we go. The gravel guard started to float, so I put a rock on top to weigh it down while I added the last three of the 12 bags of clay balls. All done! Now it's time to see how long it takes to fill and drain the grow bed. The siphon initiated began to drain back into the aquarium. It finally stopped at about nine and a half minutes.
time to add some compost tea to the aquaponics, because technically it's only a hydroponics system until we get our fish that we ordered last week. Well, it looks like the filter's doing its job. Yum! Compost tea chunks. Now to get some veggies transplanted. These were started in soil blocks on our back deck and have been anxiously waiting to get moved into something bigger. Ashley rinsed off the majority of the soil from the roots in some water. To transplant, we used a piece of pipe to create space for the plant start. Shove it into the clay balls and then scoop out the center. Place the plant into the pipe and then gently lift the pipe up over the plant. Allow the balls to slowly cover the roots. Let's do another. Rinsing the soil off the roots was by far the most time-consuming part of this process. We'll be starting some seeds in trays without soil, as well as sowing seeds directly into the clay ball media very soon. We have a variety of produce growing in the grow bed of this new system, and I just got email notification that our blue tilapia have shipped. Make sure you subscribe if you don't already so you can see how we get them into the tank and see how this system flourishes. We really appreciate you watching and hope you learned something today. We'll see you next time.